Okay, friends, we're going to pick up where we left off. Uh, it was just too much fun for one video, I guess. So we are going to do what we did before. We are going to square both sides. This is going to become foiling. And this is going to cancel out and be really cute and pretty and easy. All right, if I foil here, I'll get a four. Then on the outside, I'll get plus two root x minus four. And on the inside, I'll get plus two root x minus four. Okay, and then the root x minus four times itself will just give me x minus four. So I have these fours that cancel. I have these that become four root x minus four. This x, I can move to the other side and I'll end up with x minus one when I combine. Alrighty, so I can divide out the four is probably the most similar to what we've been doing. And so each of these things gets divided by four. Now I'm going to square. I'm gonna square this and I'm going to square this. This is easy. This is maybe a little bit tricky. You can use your calculator, you can use decimals, it doesn't really matter, because in the end I'm gonna turn them back into whole numbers. But as I did it, I'm gonna have 1 16th x squared, the outside's gonna become minus 1 16th x, so is the inside, and then this will become plus 1 16th. So this is pretty ugly. These two go together to become two minus two sixteenths. And I'm gonna leave that for now, even though that can reduce, and I'll show you why. This whole problem is messy. And so what I'm gonna do is I wish that everything was 16 times bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply every single part by 16. So I'll have 16x minus 64 equals x squared minus 2x plus one, because I'm just multiplying 16 by each thing, but once I get to the right of the equal sign, the top 16 and the bottom will cancel. So now I'm left with this, and I need to move the pieces on the left over. That'll give me x squared. When I move this 16 over by subtraction, I'll have minus 18x. And when I move this 64 over by addition, I'll have 65. Factoring 65 in a way that adds up to 18, I'm gonna get a five and a 13. They're both going to be negative. Cram my X in there, sorry. And then I'm gonna go back and check my two possibilities because I'm getting five or 13. And in this case, just to save us time, these both check out and those are gonna be legitimate answers. Alrighty, so let's carry on. Um, here we are re rewriting, um, switching the form. So this is like true review, this goes back a while. Keeping in mind that what's on the top is the power, what's on the bottom is the root. So if I rewrite this, I'm gonna have 27, to a cube root and then technically it's to the first power, but I don't really need to write that. I use my chart and I find out that that would be three. Here, if I rewrite this, I'm gonna have, um, well, first of all, it's negative. So let's kind of swap that around. That's gonna be one over 36 to the three halves. So I'm gonna have one over 36 where two is the root and then three is the power. So I do the square root first, which would be one over six, and then I do the power. So I get one over 216. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and um, rewrite this one. I'm gonna have my 16, and it's gonna be to a negative three power with a fourth root. But now to evaluate it, I'm gonna have that one over 16 to the three fourths in order for it to be positive. Then that's gonna be looking for the fourth root of 16 cubed on the bottom. Fourth root of 16 is a two. 
So when I cube it, my final answer is 1 over 8. And here, if I rewrite this, I'm going to have my negative 27, and I include the negative so that I know that it was in um, affected by both the root and the power. That is going to have a fourth power cube root index. Thinking about it here, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, but because I'm then bringing it to a fourth power, which is even, it turns back into a positive value. Okay, digging deep into the graphing, the very first thing we did, so this will seem like a while ago, we wanted to pay attention to what index we had, and in this case, we have the square root. So the numbers that I had encouraged you to use were 0, 1, and 4. My dog Penny is getting a drink, you can probably hear. Square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. Those were our starting numbers. Then anything that goes on on the outside, beginning and end, those affect the y. So y is going to get multiplied by 2, and then you're going to subtract 4 from those values. That's going to account for the stretch that this 2 is supposed to do and the fact that this is supposed to move it 4 down. Anything that takes place inside the radical affects the x. It actually goes the opposite way. It'll go to the left three. So to make it go to the left, you're going to need to subtract from your x's. So this will become a negative three. One minus three becomes negative two. Four minus three becomes one. So those are now our new x's that'll move our original graph to the left. For the y's, we always, because of PEMDAS, we do multiplying, dividing before adding and subtracting. So 2 times 0, 2 times 1, 2 times 2 accounts for our vertical stretch. Then we take away 4 from each of those values, and now we have the xy pairs that we'll be graphing. So negative 3, negative 4. Then we're going to graph negative 2, negative 2. And then we're going to graph... 1, 0. Keeping in mind that you should already know what this graph looks like, and this is the square root graph, so it's going to be this little hook thing. My domain is wherever this starts, so that's from negative 3, and it goes off to infinity. The negative 3 is included in my graph. Some of you prefer to write it like this. That's fine. For range, it goes from here on up, which is from negative 4 to infinity. Or again, you can write it like this, but you do have to switch to y's because that is range. We do the same process here, but because this is a cube root, we start with a different set of numbers. We start with negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, because we know they're cubes and they're nice whole numbers, easy to work with. What changes will take place? Well, this is on the outside, and so that's going to add to our y's. This is on the inside, but it does the opposite of what you think. So it's actually going to go to the right one, so we need to add one to our x's. So if I add one to each of these x's, I'll have my new x's. And if I add three to each of my old x's, I'll, excuse me, y's, I'll have my new y's. That will account for moving it up three and right one. So let's go ahead and plot these x's with these y's. So negative 7, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 9, 5. So it seems like such a weird random list of numbers, but zoop, there you go. That is your curve that looks like it should for a cube root graph. Keeping in mind that the beauty of these is that the domain is always all reals, as is the range. So here, if you prefer, you can write it like this. But again, switch to Y's when you are doing your range. All right. Um, geez, Louise, man, this goes on forever. I am going to skip down here to these other graphing ones while we're at it and then I'll do a third video for the last set. Okay, so here we are looking at some more graphs. This one is a square root. 
So I'm gonna start with my square root values. I like to use zero, one, and four because the square roots are nice and easy whole numbers. This two is gonna get multiplied by my y's. This three is gonna get added over here. So three more than zero, three more than one, and three more than four. Over here, double all of these up, and I'm ready to graph. Three, zero would be one, two, three, zero right there. One, two, three, four, up two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up one, two, three, four. And that is gonna be the hook for my, um, excuse me, my square root graph. It starts at an X of three, goes forever, starts at a Y of zero and goes forever. And again, write it whichever way floats your boat. All right, this one's got a flipper doodle. Right here, I've got my cube root. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my chart. I'm gonna use all my favorite numbers for cube rooting because they give me lovely whole numbers and I don't have to deal with decimals. This negative is going to flip my graph over and in order to make it flip my graph over, I basically just have to change the sign of all of my y's. So that becomes positive two, positive one, zero, negative one, negative two. So they just flip into positive or negative values. This keep in mind is gonna move this to the left two. To make that happen, I actually need to subtract two from each of my old X's. So I just took away two from each of them. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. Negative 10, great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, down two. Then negative three, one. Negative one, two, three, one. Negative two, zero. Oh, I made my, uh, that makes sense. I put mine at a negative two on this first one. It should have been positive, sorry. Okay, so then two, negative two, zero, negative one, negative one, and positive one, two, three, four, five, six, down two. Now everything looks hunky-dory because now it'll go the direction that it should. It's coming down from left to right because it flipped, and the beauty of these is that they always go forever and ever in every single direction. All right, so there is some graphing stuff. Let's take a break and you can do a third video to get you through these middle guys.